Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast Radio. Good morning, I'm Carl Fitzpatrick and welcome to Business Matters. Well, one Irish business that is tackling the spread of the coronavirus with its innovative product is Clever Hygiene Solutions. The company's co-founder, Brian Cunningham, joins me now to explain how. Brian, start by telling us how the initial idea for this product came about. Well, Carl, I'm a mechanical engineer by trade, and my father, unfortunately, in his latter years in the hospital, contracted MRSA, and... um, we just got thinking and we wanted to try and see was there anything that we could come up with that might help and even in the smallest of ways reduce the spread of infections within the hospital environment and we happened to pick on door hands because door hands are well, they're one of the most commonly and frequently touched surfaces of all within the hospital environment we felt if we could design a system like ours that would disinfect the handle with a, with a, with a mist of disinfectant each time the door was used then it could perhaps help reduce the spread of infection. So once you had the germ of that idea, how did you go about researching it? Well, we had the idea and, you know, first of all, you've got to bear in mind that we're talking about something that's invisible. And, you know, it's all very well saying people know there's germs on doors or there's, there's, there's different types of things. But when you can't see it, how do you know? So we came up with the basics of the idea and we approached Trinity College to help us substantiate what we were talking about, what was on handles or what could we do or how, how could we go about doing this and we were very lucky their, their senior lecturer in microbiology at the time there, a, a chap called Dr Ronnie Russell he took a big shine to this whole project from the word go in actual fact he said to us at the very start you are addressing what up to now has been an unaddressed problem he said door handles play a serious role and other contact services such as them within hospital environments or any environment not just a hospital environment it could be schools colleges anywhere because people are constantly touching door handles. So you went off and developed a new door handle device. Talk to mm-hmm. us about how it works. Carl, it's, 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 a, it's a very simple system. I mean, it's mechanical. There's, there's no batteries, there's no power supply. It utilises the energy created by the opening and closing motion of the door. So each time a door is used, our system operates. Because it's associated with the door, Compliance is basically guaranteed because it's going to work each time the door is used. And what it does simply is it just puts a fresh mist of disinfectant onto the handle. And it's, 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 not, it's not to clean the hands of the users because the actual system operates after the user has walked away from the door. The system operates when you walk in, say, for example, out of a washroom. You pull the door open, you walk out, the door closes after you, and as it closes, it dispenses a predetermined amount of disinfectant onto the handle, destroying any microbial growth and rendering the handle safe for the next user to touch. And have you got any independent tests or studies completed on the effectiveness of the device? Yes, we have done a number of tests over the years. Recently, we've just completed a serious study in a major HSE hospital. The study was run over a 16-week period and involved in excess of 1,100 samples, which were independently analysed at a, an accredited laboratory in the UK for, for, for such testing. We sent the samples, or they were sent by the hospital to the laboratory in the UK, who identified the different types of growth on the handle. And now the next step is to further identify these types of growth and determine if some of them are what you might call bad and some of them are white called good so because say some bacteria is good but we found a number of potentially pathogenic uh, microbes on the handle which are in the process of being tested even further again for antibiotic resistance and brian in terms of the disinfectant itself that you're using in the device mm-hmm. is that refillable or a single use cartridge and no. how many sprays do you get yeah, out of each yeah. cartridge they're single use cartridges and we Throughout the development, we, 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 we toyed around with various sizes of cartridges because the size of the cartridge determines the size of the unit. And, you know, we've got to consider that we can't be putting monsters on the door. We've got to put something that, aesthetically speaking, is a little bit attractive. So we decided on a, a quantity of 4,000 sprays per cartridge, which we felt in most cases, in a lot of cases, no, in a lot of cases it's not, but in a lot of cases this would average out at about a month's usage. Certainly there's certain doors perhaps, say, the, the likes of 
the public toilet door and reception areas of hospitals, which are highly used, you might only get a week or possibly two weeks on those doors. But on most doors, you get approximately a month's use out of a cartridge. And have you received the surge in demand for the device since the COVID-19 outbreak? Almost certainly, yes, we have indeed. And just this week, we, 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 we put them into a number of places, not just here in Ireland, but abroad. We've just fulfilled several orders going to Canada, America. And here in Ireland, we've just, we've, we're in a number of hospitals and nursing homes. We've now started to get a lot more interest from other organisations. For example, Bank of Ireland bought a load from us this week, and they're in the process of fitting them throughout their, their branch network at the moment. Um, we've had a number of other people, because <laughs> what has actually happened is, of course, people were aware of handles and they're aware of the problems with handles, but their, their, their awareness has just risen so much throughout this coronavirus. And yes, we're getting a lot more interest in the product. And are you meeting anyone that's sceptical about the device? And if so, how are you dealing with these objections? Yes, there's always going to be scepticism. And, you know, um, because I say, unfortunately, we are dealing with something that is invisible. I mean, we can and we have done. We've gone to people. We've, we've gone into organisations and told us, oh, we don't need this product. We, we, we've got a good system here. We've got a good cleaning program here. We don't need this. Our hands are grand. But we use contact slides, which are sites that will take samples of microbial growth on door handles. Basically, you, you, you touch it off a particular part of the handle or any part of the handle, and you, you put the swab. It's, 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 a, it's a sample slide. It's called a swab, sample away, whatever. And we incubate it for 48 hours at 35, 36 degrees, and that will show any growth. And people are quite alarmed when we come back and show them what we found on their handle that they thought was clean. And have you secured a patent for this product? Oh, oh yes, yeah, yeah. We have worldwide patents on this. We've received our, 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 our European patent, our US patent, um, and a couple of other patents, and we're still waiting on just a few more. But yes, we, we, we have worldwide patents on this. And do you have any plans to develop a similar product for the domestic market? We're working on it. We feel there's a big demand for that also. Unfortunately, our system at the moment is designed for industrial use isn't really the word for it, but commercial use, whatever, in the likes of hospitals and places where there's, there's high volume of traffic. So we had to develop a unit that was, could cope with the high volume of traffic. We would be looking to try and develop this into a, a smaller scale down model that would be suitable for, for domestic use, yes, because we feel it's as important in, 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 in the household as it is anywhere else. Because while we're talking now, everyone's talking about the coronavirus, and et cetera, but there's other things all year round. I mean, just the common cold, the flu, I mean, norovirus when it comes in the winter time. I mean, the, all, 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 all of these illnesses and, and, and diseases are known to linger on door handles for, for a considerable amount of time. I mean, the chief medical officer uh, in, in England, Chris Whitty, announced there just two weeks ago that the coronavirus can survive on door handles for three days. Like, and when he says that, that's a fact. That's not him just making up a story. That, that's a fact. I mean, some will argue it lasts even longer. But it's certainly known to last three days. That's a long time, and an awful lot of hands are going to touch that handle in that three-day period. And if it's not cleaned, it doesn't take a genius to work out what the consequences can be. So it's important to clean handles. It's very important to clean handles. And ideally, it's important to clean them every time they are touched. That's not always physically possible, but our system does it. I mean, this country's Hong Kong. <laughs> Hong, I've been in a shopping centre in Hong Kong, and in the public toilets, there was a man there, and that's what he did all day long. As people walked out of the toilet, he sprayed sanitizer onto the handle and rubbed it down. And of course, if you're ever out on a cruise line, they're doing it all day and all night course, as well. Of course, because it's, it's an enclosed environment, you know, and, you know, <laughs> some of the people don't really realise, and I say again, they're invisible, you don't see them. But if you're in an enclosed environment, or it be a workplace or wherever it may be, and you're not feeling great, you might have a stuffy head or a touch of a cold coming on or flu, whatever it may be, chances are you'll go into the washroom with a toilet and you'll clear your head, you'll blow your nose, you'll, you'll, you'll lose tissue. And if you don't wash your hands properly or finish doing that, you're going to put that virus onto the handle as you walk out the door. And that's lingering on that handle for the next user. And that's how people pick up. I'm not saying it's the only way, of course it's not. But it is one of the links in the chain of infection. And it's important to attack each and every link as you can. The more links you can break in that chain, the greater the chance of destroying that chain. And we've picked on door handles. 
they are a serious link and we know how to prevent them from being a link any further. And Brian, finally, what are your export plans for this device over the coming years? We have a number of distributors interested in our product. As I say, we've just shipped out some quantities both to Canada and, and, and the US over the last few weeks. We have several other countries where people are looking for them. We, we now, our, our, our biggest drawback and our biggest problem was, was, was coming up with this study. This study that we've completed in the hospital, and I say we're still waiting on this lab when it reopens again after it's been closed with the, with the, with the coronavirus. When that reopens and we got our results finalised, it is our intention then to have them peer-reviewed and prepared for publication in medical journals. And that's what you need when you go to, to, to present products, new products, especially in infection control, to different hospitals in different parts. Everyone will ask, was it peer-reviewed? Has it been proven? Has it been printed in studies? And that's what we are doing. We would have actually had it done now, or at least within the week or so of now, had this factory or this laboratory in France not been closed. It has just delayed us for the time being. But once we, they get open again, we will get this finalised. Well, if you've just tuned in, that was Brian Cunningham from Clever Hygiene Solutions. And any product that can help to curtail COVID-19 is particularly welcome right now. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick.